I was a very strong believer in, in, uh, in Christianity. I used to be obviously worried about going to hell, for being a bad person. I wanted to get to heaven. Um, I was taught that at my school. But I think uh, one day it, it kind of dawned on me that there are different religions around the world. And I, if I was born in another country, I'd be a different religion. So does geography dictate my belief? You know, does geography dictate what is truth? So in that, I started to ask myself that how do I know what's the truth? Maybe I'm following the wrong religion. So what I did was I left uh, Christianity and I still kept my belief in God. But I was going to try to find what the correct religion was or the correct belief or the truth or whatever it might look like, wherever it might be. So, um, so I was devout as a normal Christian. But I never believed that uh, Jesus was God. Um, but no one ever told me that, that Jesus was God. It, it, it seemed to me when I was um, reciting the hymns in the Mass that Jesus was a special person, that uh, he had a special title called Son of God. Uh, but he wasn't God because there was always Jesus and then, then there was God. You see, and you see in the Bible there's Jesus and he, taught, and he prays to God and there's God and there's, and there's Jesus and they're, in two, you know, they're two different persons. And so I set upon myself on a very ambitious project for a 11-year-old. Uh, and that was um, I would research everything I could find from human knowledge, um, everything that was currently known and deduce or decipher some kind of truth out of that, to find the truth, the hidden truth, the code, so to speak, out of all everything that human knowledge knows. So I got into science. I got into um, researching every kind of religion and cult you can think of. So there's Buddhism, Jainism, Hinduism, Rastafarianism, Mormons, Moonies, uh, various uh, Christian cults in the American Southwest. You name it, I, I read it, I researched it. Um, in fact, it was quite odd is at the time uh, I didn't think Islam had any kind of truth to it because it seemed so simple. It was so simple, I thought, no, the truth must be some deep, profound, mystical idea. It can't be so simple like this. I'll, I'll put it to the back and I'll go through all these um, you know, mystery cults. The more mysterious, the better. As I kind of went on in my research, I noticed there, was, there were certain holes and gaps with all these different beliefs. And I, I know I was very young, but there were some very, very kind of very blatant contradictions which I encountered. So, for example, I was researching Buddhism, and the concepts which I encountered with Buddhism was that you know the purpose of our, of our life is to uh, escape suffering by reaching enlightenment. And I asked, okay, what's enlightenment? Oh, enlightenment is when you know man's purpose in life. But then, but but if my purpose in life is to reach enlightenment, then I, enlightenment is knowing one's purpose in life. Then I know it but I'm not enlightened, or am I? And th these were the kind of problems which I encountered, and I just said, okay, I discount that. And I, I went through again, I said, uh, Christianity, just seemed, uh, Christianity seemed like a, just a, a bunch of assertions which uh, weren't backed up by any evidence. And um, Judaism seemed very focused on uh, the history of uh, one particular uh, race throughout time. And I was looking for something that was more universal, that applied to, more, to all human beings, that all human beings would be equally under. And then I bumped into Islam. And the thing I bumped into Islam was the hijab. I embraced Islam at 14 years old. And it was, it was a, a strange because it, it seemed like a personal experience. And what I mean by that is there was no one else in my area that I knew who was Muslim. And there's no mosques in my in my area, and it was just a. It really did feel like in the in the ab almost absolute sense of the word a personal and individual decision. I was alone in this. I was interested in Islam. I was very interested in Islam because of my first encounter with with the idea and the concept of the of the hijab. But that led on to me looking at uh, uh, that Islam that is a holistic system. It seems to answer every aspect of human life, uh, hu human organizations or society, human psychology. Um, it answered the phenomenon of the universe, or rather, I would say, you know, the human existence and our encounter of this, with this universe. So, human, you know, uh, being born, a finite life, 
a mixture of, of, of pleasure and suffering, um, reproducing, all these, these, these phenomena. Islam provided this, this meaningful narrative. And I, w I was a skeptic at heart. I'm a, I'm a natural skeptic. So the way I kind of interact with something is I try to disprove it. That's how I do it. I try to find holes in Islam's uh, beliefs. I try to find inconsistencies or irrationalities. I try to find maybe some aspect of reality which Islam couldn't explain. So it's equivalent of a person um, who you know, believes that the earth obviously is flat and then you say, well, I've the earth is round, so your, you know, your belief it can't be right. And I was trying to find some evidence from reality that disproves Islam. I was, tr I was uh, really struggling so hard, the more I tried to disprove Islam, the more Islam gave me answers. And the more these answers were more profound, and then the more they made even more sense. And it just, in a way, was a process of elimination. All other belief systems, from uh, you know, Jainism, Buddhism, Christianity, and atheism, all these other belief systems that are based on blind faith, uh, just weren't consistent. There were many holes and gaps and problems within their, uh, within their worldview. On, and a lot of them didn't have a worldview. But Islam had a very consistent worldview and it made rational sense. And I think I, like many other converts that I've encountered, we embraced Islam because it quite literally nothing else makes sense except Islam. And it answers everything beautifully. And, not, and it's not out of an emotional, I'm not an emotional person when it comes to choosing what I believe because emotions can lie to you, they can deceive you. But rather, it made very strong, dare I say perfect, intellectual sense. And this is why I felt that I, I have to call myself a Muslim, I have to be a Muslim. And I, then I, w I had no one, I didn't know any Muslims, and, and at this point I was in secondary school. So I didn't know any Muslims to actually um, tell me what to do about with Islam. I was reading a lot about what Islamic, Islam says in its theology, not so much about ritual practice or things. I wanted to know the concepts of Islam, what Islam actually believes, rather than just um, the details of the practices. So when at the time I wanted to become a Muslim, and I felt I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a Muslim, I didn't know actually how to. I didn't actually know that you had to say a shahada to be a Muslim. And my equivalent of my shahada is me coming into my house and meeting my mum and saying to my mum, you know, you know, mum, you know what? I think I'll be a Muslim. And I, maybe my mum thought it was a fad. Maybe my mum just thought that, you know, kids and their phases. And she goes, OK, son, whatever you want. And that was it. <laughs> that was my shahada. No pomp or circumstance. It was just uh, as, as casual as that. Only, uh, I think, later on, um, I learned, ob obviously, as I started to get into Islam and learning about the, the, the kind of the practices of Islam, then I learned that about the shahada, that you had to say it. It wasn't sufficient. It wasn't just, oh, so as long as I believe this sentence, then I'm a Muslim. Um, it was, you have to testify it, because that affirms, uh, that affirms your belief. And so that was my shahada.